this is the most famous house in the country. It was home to the most talked about TV show of last year. In every workplace and living room and during every cab journey and tea break, there was no escaping the power of Big Brother. But if you thought well, that was mad, hold on to your pants because here comes comic relief celebrity Big Brother. <laughs> I cannot believe that it was less than six months ago that the reality game show of game shows became a national obsession. And let's face it, you would have to have been living under a large soundproof stone to have not been aware of all the utter madness, and I do mean madness, that took place in the confines of this The Big Brother house. Now, if you missed it first time round, or, like me, you're missing it still, here's a quick reminder. In Big Brother, a group of total strangers mad enough to share their lives with the nation came together to live under one roof for ten weeks in a specially constructed house in East London. Rigged with 26 cameras and 30 microphones inside and out, even in the shower, Big Brother recorded our housemates every move. You guys. All day and all night, seven days a week, and broadcast them to millions. All the laughter and the tears, all the bust-ups and the bunk-ups, you name it, we saw every single bit of it. You want to do this, me and you do it, okay? Not the rest of the group, me and you. With no television, radio, computer, phones or newspapers, our housemates were completely cut off from the outside world until you lot voted them out of the house, one by one, week by week, and we were left with the winner of Big Brother. There he is, the winner of Big Brother 2000. Craig, you voted for him. And there he is. Well done, Craig. And we're going to do all that, all over again, but with nubs on. We're doing up the house, as you can see. This time with celebrity, mm, celebrity contestants. And they're going to spend a whole week in this, the Big Brother house. Look, you know the mics and everything. Cameras are going to go behind there. And they've got to abide by the same rules. They've got to live under the same conditions, sleep under the same duvet, except we have washed the duvet covers. Uh, and they're going to be watched 24 hours a day by cameras in every single corner of the house. Except for the showers and the toilets. We have made that one concession. Oh, and they don't have to watch any Bobby's Avro. We're quite nice, really, aren't we? Okay, so, are they mad? I hear you ask. Well, no, they're not, actually. They're lovely. Because they're doing it all in aid of comic relief. Since Comic Relief began in 1985, all kinds of red-nosed nonsense has raised a staggering £174 million. People all over England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland have done more than their fair share of fooling. But celebrities have also put up with a mighty dollop of indignity for the sake of Comic Relief. It's been an extraordinary concoction of comedy for a fundamentally serious purpose. To help the lives of some of those people in both the UK and Africa who have it toughest. And yet somehow, the levity of the way of raising cash and the gravity of the cause never seem to have clashed. I have first-hand experience of the projects Comet Relief works with, like this slum in Nairobi. In all honesty, really, I just want to get the hell out of here. 
I mean, this this place is hell on earth, and I've been here, you know, a matter of hours. I mean, imagine spending your lifetime somewhere like this. It's just unimaginable. And while at first it's depressing, the experience becomes totally exhilarating seeing the changes we can make together. Like these people moving into new homes, away from the slums, with the help of money from Comic Relief. Somewhere. Anyway, who will dare take on the challenge of Celebrity Big Brother? Well, the newspapers have been absolutely chock-a-block full of ideas of who might be brave enough to cross over the thresholds, and the Celebrity Big Brother office has been frantic, fielding calls and tapes from agents and stars alike. Um, people like Darius from Pop Stars, um, Bernie Clifton and his ostrich, Jimmy Cranky, but, you know, we've had to gently let them down for various reasons, you know, either they're too sane or small or too hairy or too drunk or just too panto, you know. But I can now say that we have made our decision and I can officially divulge the names of the housemates who are going to reveal their all to help us raise hundreds of thousands of quids for comic relief. <laughs> First cab off the rank, it's the deadpan funny man. Hi, I'm uh, Jack D. I'm a comedian. Uh, I live in London and I'm giving up my wacky showbiz lifestyle for up to a week to live in the Big Brother house for comic relief. Uh, I'm Libra and all my friends say so I'm the life and soul of any party. I'm the kind of guy, if I was on blind date, I'd be the one who gets up off his stool to do the party piece. You know, like an impression of Basil Brush, something hilarious, and then, you know, make an absolute to myself and then not get picked. Okay? Now, can you stop following me? It's driving me nuts. Can you just switch it off, right? The camera's really. I'm going to get angry in a minute. Through the second square window, we can see the perfect princess of presenters. Hello, I'm Anthea. I'm 40 years old. I'm a television presenter. And I live in leafy Surrey with my husband and a menagerie of animals, which include dogs, cats and horses. Now, apart from my husband, the love of my life is actually a Spanish stallion called Caramello. He's quite gorgeous and knows it. What comes out of his bum's not very nice. I have to clean that up most mornings. But I don't actually find it quite therapeutic, especially grooming him. So I'll really miss that because I won't have anything or anybody to groom. Unless, of course, anybody would like a bit of a, a brush and a tickle in the morning. In the house, I think I might end up head of cleaning because I love it. I don't even complain about doing it, which is a very sad part of my nature. I want to start, I just can't stop. I also actually like cooking, not that I'm particularly brilliant at it. You see, you just can't beat the taste, the tang. Although my favorite meal of all time, ever, 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 is just gorgeous and salivating baked beans. I actually go a bit strange if I don't eat beans for at least 48 hours. A third of all money raised by Comic Relief stays here in this country. This is the Crescent. It's a residential and training project in Surrey for disadvantaged young people. And it's on my doorstep, just like there are Comic Relief projects on your doorstep. And it's one of the reasons that I'm going to swap my house and stay in the Big Brother house. 